Blessed is our God always now and forever and to the ages of ages. Shall not depart from you, for you always save your servants. 
Diseased is the body and the soul. Deem me truly worthy of divine guidance and her care.
as a hope and foundation, and a wall unshaken of our salvation. Από του κυρίου, 
Os portos da filha se estão a pensar em mim. Oxa, Patrick, e eu que aí o meu pai, aí o meu pai passa a se pisar o pé, de catar se pisar na primeira, entria de que monarca. God 
of the glory, and showers of fear, love, and mercies, and the intercession of her most pure lady, the pale gold, and the virgin Mary, by the power of the precious and life of the cross, the protection of the marvelous powers of heaven, the sanctification of the honor of the glorious prophet, and forever John the Baptist, the only glorious and praiseworthy apostles and the fathers among the saints, the great martyrs, the great medical teachers, the of the great, the great theologian, and John Christus, the Matanasi, the sincere of the merciful patriarchs of Alexandria. Nicholas, Bishop of Mira, the Spirit of the Ship of Unity, the Wonder Word, the Lord, the Holy Glorious, Great Martyr, George, the Victorious, Demetrius, the Lord, the Theater, the Recruit, Peter, the Commander of the Holy Hyrule, Martyr, Salamis, and Athenius, the Holy Glorious, and Victorious Martyrs, the Remembrable, God, the Ascetic Father, the Holy Righteous Ancestors of God, the Holy Manana, of the Holy Apostle Matthias, of Anthony, the Martyr of Alexandria, whose memory we commemorate today and of all the saints. We beseech only merciful Lord, hear us and as we pray to you and have mercy upon us. Yeah, yeah. 
The streams of my many tears reject that holy virgin, for you gave birth to the one who dried all the tears. With gladness fill my heart, most holy virgin lady, for you are she who received the abundant joy. A shelter and protection, and a wall of shade, and become a virgin for those who flee to you. O virgin, the brightness of your light and movement, the ones who call you God's mother most piously. O breast, I am a virgin, in that place of sickness, I have been humbled, I ask to bring remedy. Acciones y no salitos, macarines en mi perro, por fin ahí matar y no te van a monitor, que a mi nada te perro. Higher than the heavens above are you, and you are much purer than the radiance of the sun. You who have redeemed us from the curse which was upon us. From the great multitude of my sins, in my body, in my also in my soul, I plead to you, the one who is a blessing. Lady and the mother of the Christian, receive the supplications of the Lord. Now it's the only chance is to you, you the offering lady, there are so sweet with joy, with the saints most holy, together with the Baptists. Don't be so sad, as he did in me, that he's got a God of our sons in glory.
Bless the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of God forever, in the ages of ages. Back then, Lord, for peace and glory, Christe, O Theos, Vix astis mati desu, Vix doxa su catos y vinacos, Lam su que inidis amartonis, To fos u to ai dion, Res vi estis teo toku, Foto dota doxa si, you were transfigured on the mountain, O Christ our God, showing to your disciples your glory as much as they could bear. Shine upon us also, sinners, with your light everlasting, through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O giver of light, Glory to you, Bethel or Fotis and Glory, Christe or Theos, Vixas tis mati desu, in doxa su catos y vinaco, Lapso que initis a Bartolis, Tofos u toa y dion, Resvies tis Theotoku, Foto dota doxa, So God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Can we pray for our Archbishop and Father Savas, Lord, the clergy and the laity of Christ? Can we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation? Forgiveness and remission of the sins of the servants of God, all pious and orthodox Christians, those residing and visiting in this community and city, the members, council members, contributors, who love those members and benefactors of this holy church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray for the servants of God whose names have been commemorated throughout this paradoxy service for the captains, bishops, metropolitan, Paul, and Archbishop John. For the, the servants of God who are suffering and dying throughout this world, for a glory, war, and famine, that the Lord will bring peace, peace to these lands. For the servants of God that we call to mind at this time, and for all those here present and their families who wait your great and abundant mercy. And we pray for the safekeeping of its holy church, the city and of all cities and towns, from pestilence, famine, earthquake, flood, fire, and the sword, from invasion of enemies, civil war, and unforeseen death. For his mercy that he will be kind to entreat as our good God and loves all people, that he may turn away and scatter all wrath and disease that was against us, and did deliver us from his impending justified chastisement and have mercy upon us. And we pray that the Lord God will hear the voices of the petitions of the sinners and have mercy upon us. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth, and those who are far off upon the sea, and show compassion, and show compassion on us, O Master, and many sins and have mercy upon us. For a merciful and loving God are you, and to you we ascribe glory. Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and now forever into the ages of ages. Glory to your God, and all glory to you. May he who on Mount Tabor stated in glory before his disciples and apostles, Christ the true God, through the intercession of the spotless holy pure mother, the holy glorious and praiseworthy apostle, the holy glorious and triumphant powers of the holy righteous ancestors of God, the true Madonna, of the holy apostle Matthias, Anthony, the martyr of Alexandria, whose memory we commemorate the day of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, true, good, and merciful God, who loves mankind. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit. I did say sit, right? Here. I did say lay down. Yeah. I bring you the pillow. We've been, uh, we, we began this past Wednesday in going over the final hymns of the Paralysis. Uh The ones that we normally sing are, are different than the ones that we're singing now. And the reason why they are different is because we are in the mode of remembering the assumption, the remission, the fall of the sleep of our Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and, and we call Panagia. So, we did the last hymn first, because I'm backwards, and we're working backwards. So we're going to do the third hymn now so we can go over it in our minds and understand what, what this is. Our theology in the Orthodox Church, if you don't have to read the Church Fathers. All you have to do is come to church. That's all you have to do. So you, you hear it, you see it, now let's understand it. The hymn... The third hymn in this set of four stanzas that, that are at the end of this uh, parathesis begin, I have you as mediator. I have you as mediator before God who loves mankind. Okay, so, que se necipri an echo, prostin filato con teon. Okay, um, before God who loves mankind, we'll get to that in a second. I have you as mediator. What, what, what are we talking about here? Because, you know, in the, in, the, uh, in the Bible, it talks about how there's only there's only one God and one mediator. Right? That's what, that's what St. Paul says. So why do we call, why do we have the audacity to say that she is a mediator? How could we possibly go against the scripture when St. Paul is saying there's one God and one mediator to God the Father, which is Jesus Christ? Now what is St. Paul saying? Is he saying? Is he saying that there is only one person that can call upon God? No, that's clearly not true because we know that, that after the resurrection, after the Spirit was given to us, we all can call upon God. We all can mediate for each other. We all can kind of be that person that guides the next person to go to the Lord. What St. Paul is talking about, Mesitrio, okay, or, or Mesitrio, when he's talking about the mediator, the mediator with a capital M, bold print, italicized, and underlined, He's talking about what Jesus did for us when he ascended, when he came down, took flesh, suffered, died, rose, and then wasn't done, took our flesh back up to God the Father. This is what he's talking about as a mediator. He, he showed us where our flesh, where our, uh, where our bodies belong with God. That's the way we were always supposed to be. And in that sense, there can be only one mediator. There can be only one mediator in that sense. But we're not using the mediator in this sense in the same way. This word in this sense is a completely different meaning. Because what did, what did the virgin do? Did she go on the cross? No. Did she, was she beaten? No. Was she struck down? No. Did a sword pierce her soul? Yes. Of all the people that went through the life and suffering of Jesus Christ, only one person could have endured what he endured in one in a little measure. Only Jesus did what he did. But to say that she did not endure a, a bit of what he endured were lying. She was there. She suffered with him. She didn't suffer the same as him, but she was with him. And when the sword pierced his side, the sword pierced her heart. And 
So it's not with audacity or with daring or with anything else except honor and fitting that we use the word mediator to describe her. Because if Jesus is the mediator between us and the Father, then for sure she, by the, by the giving of John the Apostle to her and her to John the Apostle, is clearly the mediator between us and Jesus. I mean, there's no other way. And so if we understand that, then we have no problem by saying that she had, we have her. We now have her. We possess the Virgin Mary. We possess, in some ways, the blessing and intercessions of our, of, of our blessed Panagia, the Theotokos. We have her. And the reason we have her is because she was given to us. Jesus literally, not figuratively, literally gave her to the Apostle John and by extension to the rest of the world. I have to be as a mediator before God who loves mankind. And, and again, we, you know, I love these hymns because at all points in times, when we are petitioning, we are petitioning God, when we are begging sort of for intercessions, we're asking the Virgin Mary. And that's the way these hymns are. They're very good about that. So she's the mediator before Jesus, who is God, who loves mankind, and he obviously loves all of us. This is why he gave us a mother. He allowed himself to, to have a mother, and in, and in turn, gave us a mother. Not just our earthly mother that we owe our lives to, but our heavenly mother, to whom we owe everything else. May he not question my action before the host of the angels. What is this, my action? May he, capital, capital H, so that's not just a, you know, that's not just some he somewhere. That's he. He. That's the, right? That's God. That's, may he not question my action before the host of the angels. This is, this is a, a, a reference to the fact that as mediator, you can look at your son who is judge. And you can say to your son who is judge, Psst, let them go. Let, 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 let that go. Would, would she do that? Well, she already has. The plan of salvation has already been altered because she wanted wine and a wedding. That's, I mean, it doesn't seem like a very important request. You know, at the, at the grand scheme of things, if there wasn't wine at that wedding, if they, didn't, if they ran out of wine at the wedding, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. It really wouldn't. It just would have been a wedding that there was no wine. Not a big deal. It would have been talked about for a little bit and then forgotten. She changed everything. The entire plan of salvation. Because the wedding that she was at, she, in the wedding that her son was at, she always had great joy at it. And so she allowed and asked her son, to bring that joy even in the form of that wine that he had changed from water. And it, so when we look at that, well, who is this person that she's interceding for? How important are they? It doesn't matter. We don't have to be that important, you know, to somebody else. All we have to do is be important to her. And she makes that intercession. Now, Jesus, as the judge, has the right to look at his mother and say, woman, what have you to do with me? Just like he did at the wedding of Canaan. Woman, what does this have to do with me and you? This isn't important, in other words. And in this person that you're interceding for, that I'm about to condemn or whatever, 
that I'm going to question their action. Why are you? What does this have to do with me and you? But she does. And regardless of whether we are important or not in the universal way of looking at it, you know, you, somebody says God's up here and we're all down here and we're just like this little ant. How can we possibly be important? We are. We're vitally important. But just in case we have that reference point, we also have her. And if she intercedes for us, as insignificant as it may be, the Lord normally sees it coming. May he not question my action before the host of the angels. This is the other thing that we have to remember. At the end times, when we are being judged, it's all out there. Can't hide it. Anything that we haven't confessed, anything that we haven't come before the icon, before Panagia, before Christ, anything that you have not put underneath this Petrahili or his Petrahili, it's out there. The entire universe can hear it. And that's not even just a, about an embarrassment. It's more of a my goodness. We had so much time. What have we done? Get underneath. I tell people all the time, get underneath the vessel. My goodness, you gotta get underneath the vessel. I can't even think of something more important than the removing sin from your life. I ask of you now, virgin. I ask of you, a virgin. Para calor se parten. Para calor. What, what, is, what do we say? Para calor. What, what do we, what do we say para calor? Para calor. What does this mean? We say please. Right? What, the other time, what is the other time that we say para calor? Para calor. What, what, what do we say? Somebody says, Para calor. Para calor. Okay? And so it, it's kind of this response. So it's, it's a response of, of somebody that has well, well wished you, but it is also para calo, para calo. Ka, to calo is literally to call upon. Para calo in Greek is to over and above call upon someone. In other words, you're begging of them. Not just I ask of you. This isn't, that's not good enough. It doesn't, I ask doesn't do it justice. It's not a question. I'm begging you, O Virgin, to hasten now quickly to my aid. What is this aid that we want? We want her to intercede for us. We want her to be the mediator between us and her son. Just in case our Lord is responding with his prayer by saying, not yet. You know, just like he sat back at the wedding of Cana and you know, I was a, he was going to let, come on, it's not like he didn't know that they ran out of wine. It just, he, he had another function. Um, an important function, but he had another one. She walked up to him. And we don't try to, we don't try to understand what that means in the grand scheme of salvation. We really don't. All we know is that that, that has taken place. And he didn't chastise her for it. He respected her for it. This isn't important, but he, I, I'm giving you respect. And I'll get it done. So we're asking her, we're begging her, just in case the Lord has turned his gaze away from us because of our sinfulness, we are asking her, please intercede for we need you. We need Christ. But just in case he's not listening, or not, not saying not listening, just in case his answer is not yet, and we're a little impatient, maybe you can, maybe you can bring this about. And it's not that religious, I'll tell you why, because she answers. <laughs> So many people I know have come to hear stories. 
have failed to tell stories? How many of the icons within our church are weeping from her, from her eyes? The Lord shows his miracle so often throughout history through the intercessions of the devil. That we are asking to come to our aid at this time. And so this is the third of those hymns that I just covered, and we are going to talk about the other two. Monday we'll talk about the second one, and Wednesday we'll talk about the first one. So whatever we continue in our discussion. So let us please come forward to, to venerate the icons and of course the cross that is over there still for our veneration. For you apostles from afar